He's a very holy God. He's a very righteous God. He's a God of justice. And I cannot please Him. I always fall into trouble with God. You know, but I want to assure you something this morning. I want to assure you that He's not a God who will ever embarrass you. He's, not a, he's a heavenly Father who will never put you to shame. He'll never expose your guilt. But on the other hand, I want you to know that He's a heavenly Father who is there to cover our guilt and our shame with the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. He'll never expose us. He will never embarrass us. Many times people are scared to come to church saying that if I come to church, maybe someone would come to know all the wrong things that I have done in my life. But I want you to know this morning, we have a heavenly Father who covers our shame, who covers our guilt with the precious blood of His Son, Jesus. And when we learn to understand these principles, we will begin to see a breakthrough from all the lies and the fears that the devil has put into our mind about God. You know, that, you know, right from our childhood days, sometimes he has put those things. And I want to tell you the biggest breakthrough that you can ever receive in your life is when you come into that place of an intimacy in your relationship with your heavenly father. There's one prayer that you need to really pray is, pray, Father, bring me to that place of intimacy. Bring me to that place of intimacy with you. When you come to that place of intimacy with your heavenly Father, you know, I call it the Father of all breakthroughs. That breakthrough will open a door for all other breakthroughs in your life. When you come to that place of an intimacy with your heavenly Father, when you have that revelation of the Father's love in your life, I tell you, it's going to transform your marriage. I tell you, it's going to transform your family life. It's going to transform your workplace. It's going to transform your life in this world. That's what's going to happen. When you come to that place... When you discover that God loves you unconditionally and you're accepted by Him no matter what you have done, no matter who you are, it doesn't matter, but He loves me and He's accepted me unconditionally. You know, let me take you look. the first principle, the first key to see, come to that place of intimacy is the first key to knowing the Father's love is your self-image influences the depth of your intimacy. That's the key number one. Your self-image influences the depth of your intimacy with the Heavenly Father. What is the image that you have about yourself? You know, what, is, what do you think about yourself? What is your identity? How do you look at yourself? You know, praise God, Pastor Suresh oftentimes makes you do a lot of positive faith confessions, right? He says, look around and say, you know, the best is yet to come. You know, things are going to happen. And one thing I often heard him say is change, right? Hello, are you there? Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Change is coming. Yes. Amen. You know, <clears throat> you see, I do that back home in the church. You know, I tell people sometimes, I look at someone and say, I'm the best. Tell, tell somebody, I'm the best. Yeah, I'm the best. Okay, sometimes we need to blow our own trumpets. Is it? Yeah. <clears throat> You know, but I want you to know, I do not know how many of you have understood the depth of those confessions. Let me tell you something from my own life. You know, when I grew up, I had a very low self-image of myself. 
I always look down upon myself. You see, my father had a very bad temper. And if he was anywhere close to me and I was doing something and I messed up and I, or I did it wrong, he would blow, you know, he, he would get very angry and then the dictionary would open up and all kinds of names would be called, all the honorary titles that they could ever find, he could ever find would be bestowed on me at that time. Do they do that in Malaysia? Or oh, you people are very nice. Okay, you see, so, and then what happened is, you know, all, all, all the animals of the zoo names would come out at that time, you see. Today I can look back and laugh at it because the Lord has healed me of all those things. Uh, but you know, that would really put me down. As a child, I had a very slow self-image. You know, as I grew up, I looked down upon myself. If you're being honest here, how many of you can say, that is my story? How many of you say, that was what my childhood? You know, I want you to know this. The first step towards healing that you can receive in your life is to be honest about what you have been through in your life. You know, what you have been through, we need to be honest about it. We need to acknowledge everything that we have gone through. You know, I felt I was not good. I felt I was not capable. I was not lovable. I was not someone that people enjoyed being with. You know, I had a very low self-esteem of myself and I would withdraw myself from the people. I would stay away. I had no courage to go up to people and talk to them. Today you see me standing before you and talk to you. That is a miracle. I never had courage to talk to people. I would get tongue-tied. You know, and my parents would say, they would say when I was a child, you would never make it in life. That's what they would tell me. You know, in the classroom, in the schools, I would hide behind other children, other students, so that the teacher would not find me, lest she would call me to answer a question. I was terrified to stand before a crowd. My elder brother was the popular one in home. You know, people <clears throat> among our family and our friends, he was well known. If they would come home or they would meet my parents, they would always inquire about him. But me, I was a non-entity. Nobody knew me. And that would make me go down all the more. My parents would often compare me with my elder brother and say, look at your elder brother. Why can't you be like him? Why can't you talk like him? And it was very painful what I've been through. But praise God. I want to tell you the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And that is my testimony. God can take the rejected one and make him stand before the people as his witness. Even today, it's a big surprise among our family circles. They just can't believe that I have come into the ministry and that I am a pastor. Every time they say, hear that, they say, we can't believe how did he become a pastor of all the people. You know what the Lord did? The Lord changed the image that I had of myself. And one of the most favorite verses that has changed my life is found in Psalms 139, verse 14. Anybody knows that verse? It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Amen. Turn to someone and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God never made a mistake when I was born. When I was in my mother's womb, it says, the Lord fearfully and wonderfully made me. That was one of my favorite verses that changed my life. God created me the way I am. God made me fearfully and wonderfully made. The first thing that the Lord did was He did an image change in my life. He changed the whole profile of how I looked at myself. 
And that's what the Lord did. I started looking at myself, not from the angle that my, what my parents spoke about me. I started looking at myself, not from what others spoke about me. But I started looking at myself from what God sp spoke about me. And that's what happened. You see, I know I started looking at what was the perspective that God had about me. And that's the first key if you want to experience the Father's love in your life. You need to look at yourself through the eyes of God. You need to look at yourself from the perspective that God has about you. And I want to give you a revelational truth. I want you to know this. You are created in the image of God. You are created in the image of God. And the day you were born again... The very DNA of God flowed through you. And your God is not a failure. Your God is, your God is, no, he is not a person who cannot do anything in this world. His DNA, his characteristics started flowing through you the day you were born again. And do you know something? He's also a God who's full of love. The Bible says, God is love. You know what that means? That means you are a person who is full of love. Amen? And you are a lovable person. Did you know that? You are a lovable person. Turn to someone and say, I am a lovable person. And I am full of love. Child of God, I want you to know this. You know, you are a person who's full of love. And you're a lovable person. You're a person, somebody who's so lovable. If you do not believe that, you're, not, you're a lovable person. Do you believe that? Or you don't believe that? You believe? Let me tell you something. If you find it difficult to believe that you're a lovable person, then you'll find it difficult to receive God's love in your life. His unmerited love and favor. You need to recognize that. That you are a lovable person. If you look at yourself differently from the way God looks at you, then you will not be able to have a healthy relationship. You will not be able to have a healthy relationship with others. Until you start looking at yourself the way God looks at you. You will not be able to have a healthy relationship with others. You know, today, what's the biggest challenge? In India, that's a challenge. I'm sure this is a challenge here. It's relationships. Right? Relationships in our family. Husband and wife relationship. Relationship between the parents and the children. Relationship at the workplace between the employees and the employer. That's the biggest challenge. That's why managers are paid enormous amount of money to keep all the workers together. It's relationship. And we can have healthy relationship when we start looking at ourselves through the eyes of God. When we start looking at ourselves the way God looks at us, that's when we can have healthy relationship. You know, when someone says they have a problem in their relationship with their wives or their husbands or with others, the problem is not others. The problem is with them. You know, we need to change our self-image. We need to change...